we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. I'm Stephen Jack Putala. And I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is the Land Academy Show. This is episode 1,962, and today we are talking about living and working in a place where you're getting actually smarter. It's not something I've enjoyed for most of my life. And how AI is beginning to change real estate, and we'll give some real-life examples. It's really actually starting to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny when you, I, it makes me giggle. Now when you read the 1,962, it's like, yeah, I feel it. <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, a day at the lake with your kids and, and it takes all the energy you have to get them off the boat and clean up and get in the house and feed people and put them to bed and you're just struggling. Remember those days? Oh, yeah, it happened okay. yesterday. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what kids? It's just, no, I mean, it's me. myself. Collect, oh, okay. Collecting myself after oh, okay. something like that is, is a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, and then when you finally, like, collapse, then it all, the, the weight of it's like, I did not realize how much work that was. Because you're just in it. So, Here's what's really going on with gels. So we're, we're in the middle of, not even in the middle, we're probably a month and a half into a four or five month RV situation, RV trip, all over the Northeast, well, not over the, in the Midwest, let's say, and then back to the Rocky Mountains, up and down the Rocky Mountains. So Jill's just, uh, I'm not sure what's happening to you, but whatever it is, I like it. She's oh. a half, half relaxed and half like, hmm, like the regular conversation oh. that we have in the middle of the day is, you know. I'm not sure I want to keep buying and selling land, which I have to tell you is music to my ears. Oh, no. I mean, I do. No, that that's not going to stop. You know that. <laughs> I have a true problem there. So I will never stop. You know, and I've had those conversations where I've called, you know, people have got our letters and from year, you know, and I call and he's like, yeah, I've got, I still have got some leftover and I, I've got some deals that just come up and I can't stop. Like... I've been an investor for decades and I, you know, kind of thing. I'm like, I totally get that. That will be me someday. I'll never stop. I'll be 92 and I'll be buying and selling land. <laughs> Cause that's, no, I'm, you know what? I, know I don't know how not to. Well, that's how, why I can sit here and say this. Cause yeah. I know that's never going to stop. Exactly. So, buying but selling land is a lot of fun, by the way. It it's is? easy and it's not time consuming and it's really profitable. That's but it. Managing the land Academy staff and, and, uh, and the offers to owners and all the stuff that goes on with that is a little bit more challenging. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, land income is the easiest. I hope that's why you're here because I'll, I I really mean it when I say I've got my two to four hour work week down. I do. You don't need a big staff. You don't even need a lot of money, you know, to get started. That's what's so great about this too. And you could turn it up. You know, like if I was home, I'd be like, oh, I'm in it. We're going to buy this. We're going to do that. But on the road, I'm like, hmm, I don't want to work that hard. I'm just going to do, you know, fewer deals, really make them count kind of thing. Well, and and that's what's possible. To be super fair, because I was charged with recently making this sound too easy. Oh, well. And, and I don't think who, the person that charged me with that was correct, not incorrect. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the incorrect. Once you get this thing going, it's really easy to run. True. But there's a pretty serious time commitment uh, and a, a ramp up and a learning curve. That's I'm going to say true. maybe a year, maybe six months to a year, if you're really sp spending a ton of time on it to, and really putting both you know feet forward kind of thing. True. It's not where like you you join and then money starts kind of split it, spinning out of a machine right. a few months later. It is a shorter learning curve if you have some experience in doing some properties, you know, with transactions. And I think if you've owned a business, those two things yeah. make it a lot yeah, easier. With the, it reduces the learning curve. Yep. Each week on the show, we answer questions from our Land Academy member Discord forum, review land acquisitions from our weekly member webinars, and take a deep dive into two land-related topics by popular request. We, if you uh, want a sneak peek of our Discord forum, go to landacademy.com. It's free. You know, there's another way to reach out to us, too. If you uh, would like us to answer your question, 
uh, here, or you just want some help getting involved, you guys, you can text our community, text us directly. Um, text my team at 480-530-7383. They do get read. They do get answered. And your question just might pop up on the show. Let's take a question posted by one of our members on the Land Academy Discord channel. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I love this. This just this just came in. Okay. Austin yeah, Austin wrote. It was great to speak with you, mini me, Jill, on Friday. I signed up for the course and I finished Land Academy 3.0 yesterday. Cause he and I talked about this. It's like how long does it take to get through it? I'm like, here you go. How long does it take? Ten to twelve hours. Does it really? Mm-hmm. Wow. We didn't know that? No. I mean, I re- I'm the Were one who there? recorded it and produced it and did the whole thing. <laughs> Were you there? It really is 12 hours of video. It's a lit. It's a bit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'm like, you could do it in a weekend. I'm not joking, really. I didn't know. I didn't know it was actually that long. That's. <laughs> I guess that's good or bad. I'm not it's sure. good. All right. So, the question is, so, the analytical approach that Stephen slash Jack provides to setting up mailers was invaluably helpful in preventing in preventing me from mailing sub optimal areas that's good Mm -hmm. your this is this is all from an email so sweet your perspectives on approaching the business title and escrow and legal partners and clients with a positive and energetic focus are strong elements to set up a robust business operation and i'll tell you that stuff will never never stop never change you need to have these relationships. Overall, the bottoms up approach was instrumental to give me a jumping off point. I felt uh, it was money well spent. I took copious notes, listened intently, and I'm looking forward to getting started. I really like the dynamic energy both you and Steven, Jack, exude, exude in your podcast and YouTube videos. Thank you again for your guidance. So, all right, I'm going to read all this here too. I'm about to send my first mailer, and as a matter of fact, I'm making my list this evening. So, as I mentioned when we spoke, um, I don't have the security of a W 2 anymore, so my desire to A, reduce risk, and B, minimize risk is heightened. I totally get that. Given the circumstances, early traction and directional projects will be critical for me. You asked if I had a burning question, so here's one where I'd like your point of view. So my game plan is on the first few mailers, look at very high potential. Buys for 20, sells for 40, you know, and do multiple months of the profit goal of $40,000 a month. That's very achievable. Mm-hmm. Very, very achievable and a very wise approach. Mm-hmm. So the question is this. So given economic circumstance, I'm not, this is, this is, um, can I pick out the favorite parts? Here? Sure. Of okay. Course. okay. Absolutely. This is yeah. getting long. And I wrote him back in a very, very nice email. So, by the way, this is who we are. You ask, I'm going to help. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to pick a burning question and we're going to do this one here. Um, how about... Let's just let's just jump in. Am I entering at the right time? Right. So he's got four questions here. They're actually good good questions, and, yeah. and Jill and I will answer them together. Yeah. Am I ans- am I answering the market at the right time? You know, I don't know, and I'm not selling anything here. When entering real estate in general is a bad time. Mm-hmm. You know, I I just don't because we don't make uh, because of experience. We and I like to think most at real active land academy members don't make bad decisions in any market. And so you can enter at the top of the market, and and not make if you're if you follow the program and you're really like have a real estate type personality, you're not going to overspend for properties. Here is not. Here was my answer. So entering at the right time, I said, okay, let's think about your game plan. Your game plan is like buy for twenty, sell for forty, because you think it's worth eighty, right? So my thoughts are, well, hold on a moment. So why are we not trying to sell for closer to eighty? So I said, okay, you buy for twenty list it with somebody between 70, 75, you know, somewhere in there. Cause that way your buyer knows they're getting a great deal. And then, and then my thoughts were, so what if things change in that market? You think you're doing it, you're going for 70, but all the offers are coming in around 50. So you know what? You decide I'm going to take this offer. It's cash. I love it. So I bought for 20. I sold for 50. Was that a fail? Nope. That's not a fail. There's, you know, there's no real way to explain. This person's very analytical mm-hmm. and very intelligent. Very and this happens to Jill and I all the time where, 
young, intelligent people join our group and they have a lot of questions because they want to put this in a box mm -hmm. and crank the handle and have it spit out 40 grand a month, which I completely understand because I have that personality and that's what I want. The reality is you send a ton of mail out correctly. You learn how to do that. Spend a lot of time. This person's doing that. Uh, learning how to do it, spend a lot of time and get the right mail out and price right. Mm -hmm. Tons of deals come back and then you make decisions based on the five or 10 deals or let's just call it five deals that come back that you think are great deals. And mm -hmm. then all the stuff that you were preemptively were trying to uh, put in that box just goes away. Because mm -hmm. if you got a property that's worth $100,000 and you've got a signed agreement for 25000 but it needs this or there's something going on over here, one of the A's isn't just right. You focus your attention on that and then just get it purchased and get it resold. And so it's not, it, whether or not you're in the market at the right time doesn't enter your question anymore or mm -hmm. it doesn't enter your mind anymore. Or should I have purchased it in Georgia or Maine? It just, that all kind of stops. So mm -hmm. you have to deal with what comes back in the mail. Totally. Can we skip down to um, just I don't the the regional questions and some of the specifics that 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 this is a good question that Austin asked like I answered personally in an email to him so um, and then so the 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 other question that that Jack wants to bring up here that he that that you asked um, Austin which is really really good so and I'll, can I give my answer first and then you yeah. give oh, your yeah, answer for sure. okay so he said what other factors should I consider just to de-risk my business you know given everything that's going on right now so you know what I said I said you know I said um what do you what's so funny I don't know because it's a really intelligently written yeah. question and you just kind of glossed over it here's the real question that Jill um Jill well you go then you answer what, it how you want what to. other factors should I consider to de-risk my business given the macroeconomics uh, macroeconomic situation and it may not be the strongest uh you know to, point of entry in this which i think is incredibly intelligent and so the best thing that you can possibly well you're you said you're gonna answer so go no, ahead you go, no you go no no I, seriously. seriously you go mm -hmm. the best thing you can do is buy property for the right price it's as simple as that if you overspend which almost never happens here uh in land academy but if you pay too much for a piece of property that is not good and if you send a ton of to send a ton of mail out, price it correctly, have somebody answer the phone uh, that is really, really strong from a sales slash uh, personal, personal development uh, relationship building perspe uh, perspective like Jill, and then buy the properties and resell them. That's the entire business model. Uh, you can't leave one of those things out. Here's my answer. It was less wordy. <laughs> when does that ever happen? My answer is less wordy than Jack's. My answer was, all right, you want to really de-risk your business and make sure you're doing a good job, then you need to make sure every property has all of our six A's and you need to feel like you are hurrying up to close so this seller doesn't change their mind. Like you love, you're like, I can't believe this guy's selling me this property for this. How fast can we close? then you know you're you did great and you know what and that's what i do yeah that's what i do all the time we come at this that's kind of that's how i roll and... i'm not like mm, let's just see how this goes mm -mm. i'm really <laughs> i'm really serious and committed and and then i and that's why you know we always say you win when you buy it and that's really the rush that you get when you buy it i know what it's worth i know how it's going to sell i know how awesome it is the rush is right like wow i can't believe this property came in this is gorgeous heck i want to live there kind of thing that that then you know you did great today's first topic living and working in a place where you're getting smarter so like i said earlier jill and i um are in the middle or close to the beginning or middle of a four or five month RV expedition all over the country. And we're in Northern Michigan right now, surrounded by some people that I went to high school with that are, I'm rethinking and relearning that, how smart they are I and thought, how accomplished they are. I thought when you started to say rethinking, I thought like, are you rethinking your relationships or rethinking <laughs> no. your high school experience? <laughs> well, yeah, are you I rethinking what the heck were we doing? Boy, I'll tell you. How are we alive? If you look back on your high school experience and were satisfied with that, that's not, that's not okay. <laughs> Everybody wants to re go back and do that. I don't care who you are. Go oh back and do gosh. that again. 
Anyway, these uh, my friends from high school who are up in northern Michigan right now, I grew up in Detroit, and they're, they're just very bright. And so I got to thinking, like, geez, because every conversation I have with them, it's like, well, you know, have you looked at it this way? Have you looked? And I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it, it prompted me to have this topic today where I think that, if, especially if you're really young, you just got to look around and see who you're hanging out with and make sure you're not, uh, certainly not even close to the smartest person in that environment, both in your house and in your, uh, in your workplace. Try to surround yourself with much, much more intelligent people than you are, especially at work. And then try to marry up at home if you can. Because <laughs> your kids are not going to make you any smarter. Oh, my I'm telling gosh. telling you that. They're going to drag you right down to being two if that's how old they are. It is interesting <laughs> when you really think about it that um, I think there's locations. Like we all know about, you know, Silicon Valley and stuff like that, right? So th- that I would think that would be a good environment. Like if I really wanted to, you know, be around smart people, I would try to put my be physically there um and it's interesting that there's pockets in the country places you might not expect where smart people gravitate why i'm trying to think what wonder what the key things are that smart people look for other than other smart people well i really think that land academy and i'm not selling anything here is a place where you can be you know pretty immediately hang around people that are Smart. Not necessarily smarter, but uh, have a little bit more experience about buying and selling land if that's what you want to do. You know what? I think you're right. I, I didn't even think about our place. I'm thinking like <laughs> physically in towns and things, but I know I'm smarter because of Land Academy. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Well, and some, you know what part of it is? Sometimes people ask me questions like, oh, I got to think about this one. You know, there's some really like, you know, like Austin's questions. I'm like, huh. He's going to make me think here. I really got to, yeah. I got to think, I got to be smart about this. Like what, sometimes you don't even realize what you're doing. And then when you think about it, you're like, oh, that's the strategy I've been using. And how can I even make that better and faster and easier? And then how can I convey that to other people to help them? Well, here's a totally abridged version of my professional story uh, and why I'm smarter now because of Jill. Oh. When I started this, you know, and really got some great traction buying and selling land in the 2000s so maybe from like i started in the early 90s i was a side gig back then it really kicked in around 2001 and we were smashing it um, all through the 2000s long before i met jill so and my whole uh approach to this was there we do not have customer service we don't even have a phone number i don't want to talk to you the price the property speaks for itself it's so cheap and we spent a ton of money and time developing um, a great template to sell land online so that it shouldn't generate any questions so when you read it all like every single thing we know i used to say this in the in the posting every single thing we know about this property is in this posting we buy and sell land for a living from an air-conditioned office in Scottsdale, Arizona. And that's where the posting stopped. But what I really mean is we don't care about you. We don't (laughs) care to talk to you. And if you'd like to buy the property, enter your credit card number here and you will receive. And here's an example of the package. You know, and uh, this is all true. In in fact, we don't really like you. It's all true. So we're not people. We're not like people. People don't expect me to answer your email. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I'm and walking around saying the world is wrong. Yeah. I'm right. I'm awesome, and I get it. Oh yeah. I couldn't have been further wrong, (laughs) and that works for a while because we don't have any competition at all. No, I mean, very, very little, if any, online. Mm -hmm. We sold a lot of property, thousands and thousands of properties that way. And I was happy, and I thought it was over. And then uh, the economic downturn happened, the real estate economic downturn, and people just weren't interested in buying land anymore. Enter Jill. And so Jill started to, on both the buy side and the sell side... Or buy land that way. Create uh, personal relationships with the seller, Mm -hmm. and and really efficiently. Like, in a half-hour conversation on the phone, now they're going to sell a property to Jill, where that would have never happened with me. And then on the sell side, the same thing. She would answer people's questions and honestly got us through, you know, what would have probably been a, a financial disaster more than it was. Thanks. So, you know, 
I got smarter and I continue to get smarter certainly about that end of this business to the point now where it's like there's modules in Land Academy and that's half of what we talk about in Career Path and all of that. You have to develop relationships uh, or this isn't going to work. And every single time I describe this, this business model to people who are in other businesses, their first reaction, and it happens all the time with new members, their first reaction is, oh, well, you know, there's only 150 million properties in the entire country. Yeah, well, we're going to mechanize this. We're going to mechanize this. You don't have to manually price anything. Let's just make a big, huge, massive financial machine mm-hmm. and, and uh, let's spit these things out and just be done with it. Let's, you know, kick it in the privates and walk away. That's kind of their attitude because that's what manufacturing is. That's what a lot of businesses are. A lot of very, very successful people have that kind of attitude, which is fine. But it doesn't work for buying and selling real estate. I thought it did. And I actually made it work. And I just don't think that's the case anymore. I see Jill's way and I know it's way better. And it's, we may, I mean, we, I make 10 times the money that I ever did back then, uh, Jill's way. <laughs> and so if you're staring at your business partner and they're dragging you down, that's not good. Mm-hmm. That's my whole point here. I Thank think you. you have to work and live in a place where you're getting smarter every day. Are you feel like you're getting smarter or dumber in this RV right now? Today? <laughs> At this moment? You don't want me to answer that. <laughs> uh-huh. Let's take a look at one of our favorite land acquisitions from our weekly Thursday member webinar. A Hart County, Georgia, four acres, county maintained road. Everybody's good to go. Um, size, shape, few restrictions, mobile home friendly. Near what it looks like uh, some chicken farms. So it smells lovely. Let's see, SFRs and mobile homes nearby. Buy for 11, sell for 30. Has power there. So planning and zoning said there's no zoning. One residence per parcel. Okay. Uh, can be SFR, mobile home, tiny home, but no RV or storage like structure. Okay. So no zoning is very, very, very popular oh. in rural markets all over the country. I love no low zoning, no zoning. That's probably why there's chickens here. Mm-hmm. I love it. I haven't, I can't find anything wrong with it right now. That's all I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. They paid $30,000 in 2009 for it. You're going to buy it for 11,000 and, and sell it for 30. 30. That's a good plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a Jill type plan. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, do they own, are they living next door and they own both? No, I just clicked on this to get a value. Well, it's funny is it popped right there. It makes me think that it's part of the property. Just assessed value. Try it over here. It's a different, oh, here we go. Just assessed value, 72,000. What if we looked at what's for sale dirt wise? Let's do that. We don't mind. Just in that zip. That's all I want. Dirt's great. We're all past that. It classes with flying colors of the adjacent test. Well, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. They have quite a spread there. No zoning. This is a lot of chickens. Yeah, trees and earplugs. There we go. And nose plugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they put a sign right on there. Good electricity. I put a sign at the corner. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. A sign with an arrow, 30624. Nine acres is uh, 78,000. Um, mm-hmm. square footage, 99,000. That's all good. 33 sold properties. Let's look at lot sizes bigger than five, it's five four. acres. Oh, it's four, mm-hmm. two to five. Can I see what's sold in the last year, if any. Well, you know what? I'm staring at it. Don't worry about it. There's only four. This is my only concern. Not that so lot of an area. Of market. I wonder if the market's okay versus the deal. That's my thoughts. So, but Herbert's, Herbert, I think is doing fine. He can afford to throw 11 out there and just wait and see what happens. Because that's how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Buy for 11 and just and hang out just, and just wait yeah. at 30. This is not a slam dunk by any stretch. And mm-hmm. what's going on here, I'm not sure. True. So this is not you know a risk-free transaction here. We don't have accurate. See, mm-hmm. but then there's this. You know what I would do on that one right there, by the way, everyone, if you're wondering what that $2,500 transaction was, I'd look it up. You can get the information, the address, or the APN in that listing, pop it into Parcel Fact, and see if you can see if it was a quick claim deed. And that means that $2,500 is just a number that they put down when, like, and you'll see if you see, like, looks like the same last name, that paints a picture. Then you feel better. Then you know, like, oh, all right, dad just gave it to son. They wrote down $2,500, something like that. I feel good. It's, you know, it's, it's okay. I personally wouldn't 
I'm not that excited about it just because it's going to take so long. But if that's your market and you're yeah. moving things in the area, then roll it into your inventory. Absolutely. And as always, get a, a re local realtor opinion. Did you know we have a super high level customizable coaching eight week program called Career Path? We do. It's awesome. And I still have some spe some spots open. It is coming in uh, the end of September this year, 2023. I can't remember what the first start date is, but here's what you do. Go to landacademy.com and then under programs, you're going to find something called Career Path. Click on that check it out the schedules there the dates are there more information about it um, all of that good stuff is there for you and if you think that this is something you'd be interested in like you you and what it is it's really like learning our business and fast forward like jumping to business owner you know what I mean you are a business owner by the way when you come in here but jumping to high level doing deals like we're doing I'm not here to mess around this is going to be my life kind of thing that's career path so go check it out and again if you have any questions you know send a note to my team support at landacademy.com yeah exactly or uh and ask them to get some kind of guest pass to our Thursday call so you can see what this is all about and we look at people's deals and they'll take care of you for Freeland sure academy yep. mm -hmm. let's take another question posted by one of our members on the land uh, academy discord channel on uh, online community again if you want a sneak peek go to landacademy.com it's free sid wrote i'm at the beginning stages of talking to a seller who wants to sell only a portion like two acres of his eight acre lot i would normally pass on this type of situation but this property is right outside of austin and two acres would be worth a decent amount of money. It's also an opportunity for me to learn something new. If I only purchase two acres of the eight, I'm assuming this would be fairly low drama, but I would need a survey, but would I need a survey before opening escrow? Or can this property be split this property split be handled during the title close? Is there anything else I'm not considering in a purchase of this type? This question is great it's something that's always on uh, everybody's mind from an economic and a money st making standpoint and if it was 1948 maybe 1952 i would have said yippee kaye heck yes split away mm -hmm. boy have things changed uh, and they've changed be in response to a bunch of ridiculously irresponsible land splitting that we're still dealing with today uh, and we talk about this on the Thursday call, especially people in Land Academy and, and people in this business. There's tons and tons of subdivisions all, all over rural America that have been recklessly subdivided. Uh, well, not even subdivided. They're, they've just been split. Mm -hmm. And so here's my opinion about what's a responsible split and what's an irresponsible split. <laughs> By the way, to answer uh, this person's question, no. You're not going to be able to split property like this uh, and split two out of eight or any. There's a ridiculous amount of rules that are that were necessary. There's a ton of rules about splitting property. Uh, is it impossible? No, it's totally possible. In fact, you see it all the time driving around. You see a new subdivision right over there that somebody went and uh, got entitled. If you're on the western part of the country, it's called entitlements. On the eastern part, it's called subdividing. And yeah, it's very, very possible and very time consuming and expensive. And the vast majority of the time, not all the time, and I'll explain it in a second, you've got to put the infrastructure in. That's the real problem. There's no real problem with subdividing property if you're going to put roads and streets in and, and sewers and, and make it a real a conducive to building structures or, or developing it, whatever, however the market demands. Can you just take two acres out of eight? Absolutely not. Almost nowhere can you do that. Uh, like, like, okay, I'm just going to rewrite the legal. <laughs> so, and, and even when I started, you could do that. You could rewrite the legal description, right. submit it, and then within reason, they would accept it. Right. Uh, they even stopped doing that around, right. around the late 90s. So, in certain states, there are uh, rules that if you follow them, you can, uh, called minor splitting, you can take one property, one AP, what you're doing is taking one APN and creating several. 
So forget about this example because that's probably never going to happen. But if it's the right zoning, if it's the right size, that can, and they'll give reasons in certain places. They'll give you reasons like an acre or two, an acre and a quarter is real popular because uh, the soil in that region theoretically can handle uh, a septic field in an acre and a quarter. And then the person next to it can put in their own septic situation in and it can handle it or a well it's all driven by utilities again it all comes back to utilities and so minor splits are great you buy a, a property for fifty thousand bucks you split it into five properties that it's zoning conducive and size conducive and all of that and economically conducive yeah you can then sell the, the each individual property for let's say twenty thousand dollars you're making some real money but when you're, if you ever talk to a sale, seller that wants to just split this portion of their property off. <laughs> it's just that's, not uh, a night and day thing. And I'll tell you where this all came from. It came from agriculture uh, and, you know, you, a farmer or a family, you have a bunch of children because you need farm hands that they grow up, they uh, get married, have kids of their own, and you split the farm in half, which is totally responsible, by the way. And then they, they, they go about their lives farming the, the other half or the back 40 or, or whatever ends up happening. So all subdividing and partial splitting comes from that concept, agriculture piecing uh, properties off. The opposite extreme is a 6,000 unit subdivision in the middle of Phoenix that these are real stories, by the way, where uh, like Anthem, mm -hmm. where you, you entitle you know, square miles of property all at the same time, put all the utilities in at the same time and, and make a fortune in the process. Mm -hmm. Reckless splitting, bad. <laughs> Reckless mailing, good. That's correct. I was thinking the same thing <laughs> when I said that. Uh huh. Today's second topic, how AI is beginning to change real estate and with a couple of real life examples. This is really interesting to me. When you, we were at dinner the other night well you're going to tell the whole story you go ahead I, I, but this is good well it started with a lunch that we had with a good buddy of yours and then the conversation that you two got into and then you and i well you started from something you've been reading and researching you had the conversation with the buddy i'm gonna let you tell the whole story you and i went out to dinner and then f you further expanded on putting it all together i'm like oh this is brilliant Go. this all kind of started because well people have consistently been since a, since chat gbt became a thing mm -hmm. or people became it became a discussion right. know, it's been around for a really long time and it got coined somehow as AI. Let's just say that it is. I don't actually think it is, but it doesn't matter. It, really what it is, is you're asking, you're making a query in uh, computer speak. You're, you're asking something, you're making a query. And it's going out, whatever, whatever instructional program that you're sitting in front of goes out into a data set. In this case, it's the internet, the big, huge, congestive disaster of an, an internet. And making sense of all that and theoretically bringing back a result, you know, and if you've ever programmed a computer in the simplest form, you know, that's how we all learn in the beginning. We make a query, we ask it to do something through commands and then uh, within its command database data set, it executes something. Well, this is like that on steroids. And so what we started talking about, and this all got prompted because Adam Data is pretty is be, beginning to construct a product for real estate agents to help them determine who's gonna list their property for sale before they're even thinking about doing it. And so how does that happen? Well, you take a bunch of data, uh, a bunch of things that maybe aren't even going on and let's say two people who own a house, it's not even going on in their head yet. They lost their job, their kids got older, they had another kid. All of these things are reasons that people might sell their house and, and move somewhere else, to, whether to get a bigger house, to if they're older, to scale down. So if you really think about that, it's not a huge massive data set. It's maybe 50 to 80 things that might make somebody sell their house. Their credit card debt's too high, they missed a payment, uh, their insurance is not mm -hmm. current, uh, all kinds of stuff. They had Tax, a I think I think, taxes went up. They had twins is a huge one. They if can't you, afford that. If you have yeah. twins, you're looking for a different house. And so that's a great uh, use of creating a query that goes onto a data set that you have created instead of this jumbly, massive, massive, uh, insurmountable amount of data in the internet. Create your own data set 
and and have it spit out the the results that you want, the answers that you're looking for. That's a real life example of how it's going to change real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not necessarily just for real estate agents. For us, it'd be great to get there first if we can access a data, a simple data set that says we. And imagine the conversation from a sales standpoint that you would have. Hey, Mrs. Smith. Oh, I'm not going to say that I know that, though. Oh, really? No. This is interesting. What would you oh, say? Oh, no. Hi, Mrs. Smith. I know your husband passed on and you're behind on your tax payments. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm not going to do that. Well, how about, you know. <laughs> and by the way, it looks like your car was repossessed what last it? It week. It doesn't have to be. No, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't have to all be bad news. <laughs> Could like, you imagine? How about, you know, I just... No, I just know that going into it. Hold on. Do you know how sales work? <laughs> Listen, I'm not joking. It doesn't have to be bad news. <laughs> or the... No. How about you're... At, we're at the peak of the market. Looks like you're... Hey, looks like you're an empty nester. <laughs> when you're done, let me know. Okay. It's not that funny, Jill. I mean, I wouldn't really use it like that, though. That's the truth of it. I would still... I would... I wouldn't... I would not share that I know that much that I don't I think that backfires how about keeping it economic terms looks like you have thirty thousand dollars left on your mortgage Amazon just finished their uh, their distribution center three miles away your house is at an all-time high of fill in the blank uh, I'm happy to buy it if you'd like I wouldn't do that so what would you do? I mean, really. nothing. I would just those would be the people I'm reaching out to, and and knowing their story in my head. I do that now. I know you do. I already do that. So now. give us an example. Everyone's I, done. I don't share anything. I do like I'll do some recon on people. Like, oh look at this. This guy owns six properties in the area, and he wants to sell this one. Maybe he wants to sell the other ones. I'm not going to share that. Can you give us an example of how what you would say? Do you, well, it's just, it's just, I'm having my same normal conversation about buying a property. I know, what's it, what is that? That's my question. It's no change. Do you want to sell? And if so, what? And do you have anything else? I know what he's got. I need trying to figure out, you know, let him come to me and let me know. It's always better. You know what? Here's why. It is always better if they think they're in the driver's seat. When you know you're in the driver's seat. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm really aware of that. I'm not going to... Sh- I live with you. Thank you very much. See, there's so much that I know about what's really going on, like right now at this moment, that I'm not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to let you think you're winning. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, that, no, you're not. I no. You, okay. It doesn't do any good. It's, you know, it doesn't... It, it, it can only backfire. You don't want to scare people. You don't want to, you know... <sighs> Come on, haven't you, like, even when people, here's a, here's an example. We get calls, we have bank accounts that, truth time, get too much money in them. Next thing you know, someone from B of A is calling us and going, I'm your new account manager. Did you know what you guys could be accruing with it? I'm like, I'm like, I got plans for this. I don't need you. I hang up. Even that, that just makes me mad and kind of rubs me the wrong way. But if I reach out to them. And I say, hey, I need some help. I want to uh, work on different interest rates, or what? Where can I place some of this stuff? What can we do? That's a whole different ball game, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, but in our business, though, we sent them a letter. They called me. I'm not going to try to scare them. So, and by the way, I'm not going to use this technology to cold call people. It's just, it might make a difference who we send offers to or how I work with them. But like I was saying, I do this now anyway. I, I try to recon. Here's an example. Um, say a call came in, um, Pat live answered it, right? Person wants to sell. So it gets to me end of the day in the email, whatever it is in my spreadsheet. So I go looking before I call the seller back. I'm like, Oh, I like this property. And then I'm going to look like, okay, where do they live? Huh? Look at that. They live in uh, upstate you know, Seattle area or whatever. They're like, okay. And I'm, I might even look at their house and go, okay, they're loaded. So there's clearly no, this is not a money thing for them. So this is now it's a convenience thing for them. So just something like that. I know ahead of time when I'm calling this person, what angle we're doing and how I'm going to take it. I'm not going to start saying, hey, it looks like you live in an $8 million house. So this $30,000 property probably means nothing to you. You want to just give it to me? I'm not, you know, does that make sense? No. Oh. Here's what I would do. <laughs> I have done in the oh. past. I'm reminded by this topic about why Jill's a salesperson. We're different. <laughs> I'm not. 
what I would do is say, and I would send a letter out this way. Uh, look, it seems to me that your house is worth a lot more or your piece of land is worth a lot more than the debt that you have on it. And now if you're thinking about selling, you know, here's our offer. And so what I would do is craft a more, a more specific, still in a mail merge situation, but a more specific, uh, letter that is a little, is, is more captivating to them about, Oh, wait a second. I do have a quarter of a million bucks, a uh, quarter of a million dollars of equity in this house. And, and we, and my parents are moving to Florida or whatever that the, is in that algorithm that specifically that says these things are happening, which is, you know, I, I think that's, I would respond to that, you know, like, let's say, you know, Joe and I have a bunch of classic cars. If somebody sent me a, a really uh, well thought out letter about, you know, I, the, I don't know how they would get this information, but I, I know you paid this for this car a few years ago. Chances are you haven't driven it because they know where we live and how many garages we have and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to talk to you about sending it, uh, t buying it from you. It, it looks to me like it's probably should be worth about X. Well, hell yeah, I'm going to pick up the phone. If somebody knows that much stuff well, will about you just... what's happening, hell yes. So are you paying retail for it? No. Then why would you say it's... It's worth about because, X. Because I know no, it's worth about 80, but I'm going to give you 60. Because I learned this from you. You start the dialogue. You see what's in there. See if it does have any flaws. And just try to get the deal done. I'm I'm sorry. I go with the Land Academy method. Go low. And see. I think that and with the volume and the amount of data that we have access to, that works fantastically well. I'm just saying, I really think that this could work. And will work. This is this is not this isn't could work or I'm not trying to improve on our existing stuff. What I'm saying is this is going to happen. Oh, I don't disagree. A AI is going to happen, and how we manage it, right? Just the same way that we manage the way we have access to data now, and to use it to our advantage is something mm -hmm. that we have to think about and take a look at. Totally. Let's take a look at another one of our favorite land acquisitions from our weekly Thursday member webinar. Would you do this deal, Catoosa County, Georgia? Accepted offer price, 65,000 bucks. Thinks we can sell it for 100, 130, 10 acres. Yes, on access. Yes, affordable. Yes, on adjacent. Yes, on attribute. Maybe one or two septic systems on the lot. It's a mountain town. Okay, don't go far from me here. Mm -hmm. Or just removed a mobile home recently. Oh, has maybe one or two septic systems. It's zone ag, but has a class R4 for multiple homes at the end of the road. So it's secluded. The realtor wants to list it for 129, but I think with uh, concerned with low number of comps. Hmm. Why did they remove the mobile home? Maybe he took it with him. Maybe. <laughs> <He's jealous. laughs> That's where he lives. He moved it over to mom's. Okay. He put a guy down there. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So you can see this. Look, there's still this. something there. Yeah. Or maybe that's the old mobile they just Could pulled be. off. Well, they were dealing with sanitation somehow. So some, and water and electricity. And oh, there's that. the street. Look, it comes right up. There's mm -hmm. this driveway. Okay, I flip and love it. So I love the deal. I, I, I mean, I love the piece of property. Can we just verify the numbers? It's 10 acres. It's oh, could you? Massive. And I'm giving you two things, but can you put a guy down there? Just, I wonder if, if the Google car went down there. Oh, he did. That's cool. That's great. What a great piece of dirt. I love it. Like, that's one of those, like, I want that. Me too. Oh, they're going to build a, oh, Scott said it's too late. I'm going to build a retirement home. <laughs> you already, you already know what you want to do with it. Like a home to retire in or like a nursing oh. home. <laughs> <laughs> this is 10 acres. 10 That's acres, why they right? removed the mobile. Oh, they were planning on building a retirement home. That's why they removed the mobile. Got it. I thought you were going to build yourself a retirement home. <sighs> Seven acres for 48. It's 10. Eight acres for 100. Five acres for three hundred. I wish it was forty-five thousand instead of sixty-five thousand. That would make me feel a little bit better. Twelve hundred square foot house in town is eight hundred uh, for sale for eight hundred thousand. One hundred and twenty, one hundred and four. Not a lot for sale for this is all property types. Seventeen sold it needs to be cheaper. What number would you like instead of sixty-five? This is twenty acres mm -hmm. sold for one hundred and fifty thousand with stuff on it. With stuff. So it needs to be around 30. Five right. for 30 itself for 60. That's just my initial opinion. I, I like that. I said 45, but I was trying to be cool about it. I would like 30. I like your 30. This. Yeah. Wow. Look at Wow. It's worth oh. it. Look at Jill's it's name. Arabian Drive. Jill's name all over it. Oh, cool. 
is that? That's awesome. This, uh, I would not give up on this either. I would build a build an argument about why it needs to be cheaper. Jill, you have something inspirational to share. You know, I want to speak for a few minutes about it kind of ties with even with today and everything at times with everything that I do, by the way, which really is um, relationships. You know, I know it sounds like a broken record, but you need to think about it. There's such an important part of the human element in what we do with all of our land deals. Let me give you an example. Um, I'm in a situation right now where uh, at the at the eleventh hour, um, found out from a broker physically driving out there that there's an access issue, and so and there's some things that the seller needs to do, and it's not a lot, but the seller needs to do to complete the access portion of this transaction, right? We're in escrow, literally about to close. That's why the broker's you know, giving us some opinions. Everything's great. But um, you need, and, and the, the hiccup is, it's not a seller that I'm working with. It's somebody else I'm helping with this deal. And they don't have the relationship created with this seller to get their buy-in. So is the seller working on it? I think so, but they're not, they don't have the, oh, wow. You know what? We're on the same team to get this deal done attitude. So you need to establish that at the very beginning of all these transactions. When you have that first conversation with a seller, you know, whether they're happy, whether they're not happy, you want to end that call with everybody on the same page and feeling good about this. Like, you know, I'm glad I talked to you. I'm, 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 you know, Jack, I'm glad I had this conversation. I came, I'm the seller here. Jack, thank you uh, for calming me down and listening to me and understanding why I think the property is worth more than you offered. You know, I know you offered 19,000. I think 25 is fair after we talked about all this. And I know you're going to go, you're going to see, you know, you're going to try, you know, work on that kind of thing. That's and to try to get the deal done. That's how you want to end these. And then all along the way, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm Jack, I'm buying the property, right? I'm going to go back. I told the seller, I'm going to see if I can make 25 work. It's not that much of a difference. I know how I'm looking at things. So to go from 19 to 25 is probably fine because I'm probably selling it for 80, you know, kind of thing. I got wiggle room there. So, and then everything I do along the way, Hey, you know, Mr. Jones, how are you? Um, uh, I, I'm working on this. I'm still waiting for two calls from the county. I know I'd call you today with an answer, but I've got one more thing I got to figure out, but I wanted to still call you like I promised. And, and, uh, I think it's going to take the, over the weekend, you know, whatever, can we talk on Monday? Where's a, what's the best time? You know, that kind of a thing. So I'm building a rapport and it doesn't take long. It doesn't take 80 phone calls and it doesn't take 80 minutes. You, you have a good attitude. Like I said, you listen to them, you follow up, like you said, you're going to, and you're building this relationship. So fast forward in a perfect world. I mean, this is the deals that I, I, that I do and I want you to do, you know, you're in escrow and some little hiccup comes up and you're like, it'd be so easy for me to call Mr. Jones, who always takes my calls now because we're buddies. He's happy to get his 25. I'm happy to give him the 25 kind of thing. So if there's any little hiccup, he takes my calls and we work it out together. That's the human element of all of it that we do in these real estate deals that you need to know is crucial. Totally agree. Thank you. Jack, what do you have for us? Do you have something you want to share? Yeah, you know, it's really hot in Phoenix right now. You know, 120 degrees, record-breaking. It's getting way more uh, news coverage than it has in the past for whatever reason this this year. Uh, I, I Probably because there's just not... Not a lot of uh, news, general news in the, in, uh, in the country. And so I got into a conversation uh, recently because my some of my family lives in northern Michigan at dinner about and their their, their friends were you know, really asking, why the hell would you ever live there? You know, and what they didn't. This is a small town we're in right now. This is a small little vacation town. And I get it. I get uh, northern Michigan in July. 
It is magical. It's a Chamber of Commerce month. But six months out of the year, it's frozen, literally. Like frozen, frozen, frozen over. And um, so that's, you know, something that I've not, I, and it's not just weather-based, but what it prompted me to think is, you know, and, and look at what the decisions I've made over my life. The fact is, I've gone where the money is. I don't think about the weather that much. Whatever the weather is, it is what it is. I've never watched the weather to plan on what I'm going to wear that day. And my my way's not, not a girl. My way's <laughs> not the right way. I'm just saying what I'm what I did. And I immediately went after I was done uh, going to college in Michigan. Went to Phoenix, which is month over month, year over year, the largest econ one of the largest economic growth environments that there are. Buckeye itself, which is a subdivision of Phoenix, is like the data center. I think it is now, or it's on its way to being the data center uh, of capital of the world. Yeah, it's out there. But man, the amount of economic growth, and pro that's why there's so many people moving in there uh, of all economic, um, uh, socioeconomic levels, all of it. There's huge, huge job opportunity and growth uh, from a Geez, you name it. I don't care if it's working from a gro at a grocery store or being the CEO. What the Taiwanese j uh, chip manufacturer is putting the largest chip manufacturing plant in the world. Why? Because it, it, the weather's hot, but it's stable. It, 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 there's no earthquakes, there's no hurricanes, there, and there's no tornadoes or natural disasters. And contrary to what everybody believes, it has a, an amazing uh, source of groundwater that some of the other surrounding states uh, don't have. They kind of feed off the Colorado River. So there's all these, um, so I'm sitting here having this conversation about why the hell would I ever live there? And I'm trying to, I'm lo looking around thinking, why would I live there? And this is why, mm -hmm. because I choose money over comfort. And so when you get older, maybe it's the other way around because you got the money thing all figured out, hopefully. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that it's, as a young person with a lot of ambition, you don't want to get stuck in a place where there's you can't uh, get that out of your system. I think you got to go where the money is. We've always done that. Isn't that funny? Like, yeah. I moved for jobs. I didn't even think about it. You know, it started when I was a kid. I guess I have to live up here because this is closer to my job. I guess I have to move to the state because this is where my job is. That kind of a thing. So I didn't, I never thought about it and I always just did it and I still do it. Well, you know, what's funny. Then you get older, we move for different reasons. We move for now it's, it is, um, opportunity. And for us, it's like, we're the best employees. Yeah. And then, so here's Staffing. been our last couple of years. Staffing. So when I was young, right, it was all about where I would work and how, and I would go where I could get the best income and have the best life and I could afford to live there. So that was number one. So like leaving LA, coming to Arizona, no brainer as far as, a, you know, being able to afford to live there. Got it. So then um, you get older and then we're like, we, we move for two reasons. One is quality of employees, right? And then also quality of education. Because that was important to us at the time with our little ones. Now our little ones are on their own. Yes. This is why we're not home. <laughs> because nobody's there. It's great. So um, now it's about, now we're making different decisions. And you know what's great? Now we're in the like, where do we want to live chapter. So that's how I think the flow is. But what you said, which is so critical, not everybody does what we do they may be in this town and live there and suck it up this is the best yeah. job i could get sucking it up oh god it's getting expensive here and i got to take out two jobs sucking it up and what if education starts to slip well this is my town this is like, these kids are going to go to the same school i want to why not what if there's a better school you guys we need to you know think what about these other life? things yeah so I, I see people doing that too. Like, so oh, my kids went to my alma mater. What's wrong with that? I'm like, oh, it kind of slipped a little bit. <laughs> Haven't you noticed? They're like, yeah, well, yeah, but this is where we live. We just, you know, I'm like, hold on. It doesn't have to be like that. There's a lot of stuff, Joe, between you and I mm -hmm. that we're just really, really similar without talking about it. True. Like we've never really even had this conversation ever. No. There's just a lot of stuff that's similar about you and I that we don't talk about which i really really appreciate we've made a compliment. multiple moves thank you for kids and education yes we have mm -hmm. for not kids, us well for money kids and, and so, not their, so much their uh, education 
Yeah, mm-hmm. not our education, yeah. but also all of the, very much most of the moves, if not all of them, are money driven. True. This is just better. We got it. Let's. We got to take this opportunity. Yep. Don't be afraid of it. Hey, don't forget, you can reach us for questions or help by texting 480-530-7383. Join us next Wednesday for another interesting episode. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. We We are are Jack Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration. To buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 